this morning we are in a beautiful backyard shade garden, uh, enjoying the shade of these enormous black walnut trees and listening to the birds with my good friend Lana Cheek. And I've been meaning to get out to this garden for years and I'm so glad that you get to experience this with me. Lana, thank you for having us here. I'm glad you came. And uh, your garden is just absolutely beautiful and I know that each plant has a story to tell. Like how many years has this been in the, in the making? Probably about 20. 20 and years. And we started very small and just kept expanding. Was your backyard similar to the other yards we're yes, seeing? Yes, grass. Was grass. And, and you have... we had problems growing grass okay. in the shade. Well, you've taken wonderful advantage of these beautiful black walnut trees. And point us, uh, show us what some of these flowers are that you've got growing. My son gave me a start of that uh, out of his woods. Uh, he's got many wildflowers uh, in his woods, and uh, it's the bellflower. Yes, American bellflower. Mm -hmm. That is And so I have beautiful. several patches of that. So in combination with this beautiful tall purple, We've got this wonderful pink and this brilliant yellow. What are those? The pink is uh, the Campion, um, and the yellow is the Texas Primrose. A friend gave me a start of each of those. Wonderful. I see over here you have a beautiful trellis with a gorgeous vine on it. What is the vine? Porcelain vine. Porcelain vine. That is really pretty. I do know that that can be very invasive, right. so what do you do to keep it in check? I clip and wind <laughs> it around and keep it on the, the trellis. Okay, that's good, good idea. What is Campanulus, this? and it is wow. uh, in the same family as the purple bellflower. Wow. So I ordered that, those from a catalog. So that's the same genus as right. that, just showing the, right. the diversity. And of course you have beautiful daisy and echinacea. Yes. How about this beautiful purple flower down here. This is the perennial bachelor button. Oh. And I love the blue. Absolutely. And it does well in the shade. Right. I love the shade in your backyard and I'm and I can't help but notice these big bright spots that are uh, punctuating the shade. Can you tell us about those? Well I have the uh, oak leaf hydrangea uh, with the white blossoms that picks up the white of the leaf in the porcelain vine. And then of and then course the, white, the, the, daisies. the daisy. And down here we have another uh, variegated the ground white cover. Spot. And then coming on down, these big, beautiful Hardy begonia. Hardy begonia. And do I see inside there some Indian, Indian pink, pink tucked away yes. back in there? That is just absolutely beautiful. How about this the oxalis. little pink beauty? Pink oh. oxalis. Wow. Well. This doesn't take much care, does it? No, it doesn't. That looks like a wonderful low maintenance ground cover. Well, we're gonna turn the corner here because there is so much more to see. Lana, I love this little arbor. What is this you have growing on top of it? This is five leaf akebia. And uh, I, I planted it because uh, I was told it would grow in the shade. And, uh, but I planted it on this side, hoping you know that it would cover the arbor and it refuses to go north. It stops. <laughs> it's got its own character. Yes. Right. How about these beautiful ground covers? There's so much. Well, I have foam here. flower that yeah. blooms in the spring and the columbine, more bellflowers, oxalis. This is the fringed um, bleeding heart. And then I have the hostas and my Annabelle hydrangeas over on this side. I know that Many shade gardens really have their, really have their big show in the spring, uh, but that's not to say that they aren't just beautiful like this in the summer as well. Do you plan uh, the use of color and texture yes. like this? Yes. I planted the ghost fern to pick with the purple to pick up the purple out of the red dragon. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. So you've got beautiful color and texture all season long. Yes. I love the, uh, the variegation in the leaves there uh, with the little white blossoms. Through the corner, I can tell this is perfect. You have a Cumberland azalea that's blooming. And I know from experience that you are a serious plant collector and you have perfect conditions for the native azaleas. 
Oh, Lana, speaking of plant collecting, this is great. This is one of my favorite natives. Uh, this is a cousin to Jack in the Pulpit. It's the same genus, Arisema, and uh, it's Arisema dracontium, green dragon. And look at that. There is the spadex. It's blooming, and you can see why they call it green dragon. It looks like a, a dragon's tongue. And this is a just exquisite specimen. Lana, I absolutely love your garden. And can you tell me a little bit about the evolution and where you started and how you proceeded to make such a beautiful paradise? Well, after we added the porch to the back of the house, I just did this little section right here in front of the porch. And then over to the side, I, I added that. And uh, then I wanted a pond and we had a very small pond that my husband and my son built. And we've had that for years. And then I wanted a path that just circled the tree down here. So we did that. And then I came up with an idea of having a, a split rail fence. So we put in one section and it just kept growing. I was gonna plant only to the fence and then on the, I got to the other side of the fence and it just kept growing and we're as far as we can go now. That is a common gardener's experience. And this is really the centerpiece of the garden to me right now, this beautiful flowing pond. Can you tell me about that? My son put this in for us two weeks ago. Two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago. And uh, it's a pondless pond. I asked for a bog, uh, very shallow bog area. And then the stream flows down into a pondless pond which has cut down on the maintenance for us. As we're getting older, it helps a lot. Well, I love the sound of the water. Uh, it is just a beautiful background to the sound of the chirping birds and how the light plays off of the water. It really just the brings life to the, the backyard. Pond. The birds love it. In contrast to the rest of the shady garden, you seem to have carved out one little spot for sun-loving sun plants. Yes, yes. I, uh, I have put perennials in here, along with uh, some shrubs in the background. I just have to say that your garden is a paradise, and I thank you so much for having us and for sharing it with us. Thank you for coming. I've enjoyed it.